involved with the architecture from the start. And a lot of it, in fact, was very experimental. And one of the good things about over the last 10 years we've working there is we've created, and I've always worked with a team of people, builders, carpenters, sound engineers, architects. And we actually have got very good at what we do. And um, I mean, the, the, and also the speed we turn it over. And you, you tend to find that everybody who works in it really enjoys working there. As opposed, you know, particularly with the studio builders, a lot of it is very mundane and nine to five for them, but somehow when we work in a strong room, the atmosphere is incredible and people really work. And you tend to get ten, ten times more done because people are happy in there. In the mid 80s, I was working in a um, graphic design studio called um, Assorted Images which is run by a guy um, called Malcolm Garrett and his partner Casper. And I was there for about three or four years and adjacent to the, the um, Sorted Images um, studios, which um, was across the courtyard, Victorian courtyard, it was old warehouses, was a recording studio called The Strong Room. And Richard Boot, who was the owner of The Strong Room, has now become a very close friend, was um, looking at my work and I was doing a lot of painting at that time, a lot of big canvases which, which were to do with this sort of magic symbolism, Druidry, shamanism, astrology, sort of effects and use of colour theories and um, he just said to me why don't you take those paintings and create interiors for the studios which I've been doing on and off for the last 10 years but for me it was a chance to actually put a lot of those ideas into a sort of more practical scientific situation to use those ideas and, and to actually try and create a working situation for musicians, engineers and producers that actually created an interior and an effect which encouraged the creation of sound and music. It was not being practical with magic.